Welcome back, folks, to World of Warships Legends. I have that game we talked about yesterday uh, for you, one of the 200K games I had. So I had five games in a row in the California that were just devastating. All of them were, I believe, high calibers, over 150,000 damage. And I am starting to feel my own in these American Dreadnoughts. I struggled with them early on. I think it was mostly due to the speed of trying to be too aggressive with them and getting myself in bad positions. Now that I've become a better player throughout this last, I don't know, six months or seven months, uh, definitely night and day difference. These American Dreadnoughts have went from my weakest ships to arguably my strongest. As um, We have a few really good ship games to show, including that... We've had some really good games lately, including the fourth ever best game in Hayuga, and that second best ever in Minnesota. It was really close to being the top game ever in Minnesota, and uh, I am absolutely loving it. Now, here at the beginning, you can see I kind of hesitated as Peter Veliki is sailing broadside. And the reason I hesitated is I wanted to see what side the carrier was going to go on. I wanted to go to the carrier side. Obviously, I want to shoot down some planes. Um, and also, that also helps whatever side I go to uh, kind of keep the carrier hopefully away from them if they stay a little bit kind of near me uh, to help help teammates with that. That's one thing I do a lot in the California is if there's an aircraft carrier, I really do actually give teammates the opportunity. Is we are going to go ahead and do a magic trick on the Peter Velicki. <laughs> and... <laughs> You know, we turned them into a submarine. Um, Russian battleships can do a lot of really amazing things. Uh, sailing broadside in one of them is not it. <laughs> there is there is no broad, you know, there is no Russian battleship that you can sail broadside in and get away with it. You know, the uh, dreadnoughts, a lot of the dreadnoughts, you can kind of get away with it, like the American ones. Uh, for a little while, not the Russian ones. Russian battleships, you're just going to get murked. So, as you can see here, we're going to, unlike the last game, make sure our AA is on, and we're going to uh, try to move up now to a little bit here to help with our AA defense. We're going to take a shot at the Emerald. I'll tell you what, these some of these... Uh, some of these cruisers early in this match get away from me and kind of wish I had some of them back. Uh, I don't know. I think the Emerald and uh, the Emerald's going to be in this match for a while. As you can see, I'm kind of paying attention enough to the left. Renown is pushing up here. Um, we're going to try to get a shot on Renown. If anybody is newer to the game, uh, it recently and haven't played the Renown, it has torpedoes. So you're going to see me very quickly when he s decides to turn towards me, as you can see right here. I am actually going to back down here in a second because I don't want... I got too much health to get rammed or torped. And you know that any ship that has torpedoes on it, that's a battleship. They're going to do some crazy sort of turn just to try to torp you. It always happens. Uh, I think it must be a warship, world of warship rule. Now, right here, one thing I will say is don't give up your angle. Do what I did there. A lot of times, I'll use my rear turrets and my front turrets uh, differently yeah, on different targets just to make sure I don't sail broadside to one of them, particularly as renowned because I want to make myself narrow because I know there's torpedoes coming at some point. And obviously, he goes broadside to send off his torpedoes and we go ahead and hit him we got really unlucky there all six shells hit all over pins <laughs> uh man we probably should have aimed a little bit farther back on the ship we're gonna take another shot at the dallas uh with our rear turrets and now the uh, renown is uh gone so uh, you can see the torpedoes like I thought were coming, and I had backed out of them. And now we're going to go ahead and move forward. You want to be careful a lot of times when people are kind of torping. Sometimes they'll plan on you backing up. I'm glad he didn't. We're going to go ahead and shoot the Agano. 
I, <laughs> this shot, I still cannot believe. As you see, uh, we only get two overpins. I thought for sure he was gone. <laughs> this came in the middle of all them them strike videos, and I thought for sure. I was like, man, this is going to be another one for the video, and he got away with it. <laughs> now, obviously, you can see I've been full forward for a while. Uh, I have the rudder shift to dodge torpedoes. This is the one time propulsion mod would have paid off a little bit. We're going to try to get ourselves in a better position. You can see this is actually a close game. Um, but you're going to find out later this is only a close game. Uh, probably because I'm on this side. Not to sound arrogant. I, I thought I had teammates helping more than what I did. I did really didn't have the best of luck when it came to that. And that happens. But we're going to go ahead, full forward ahead. We're going to push up. There's nothing really over here to scare me. The carrier, if it gets spotted, I'm just going to dub strike, hopefully. <laughs> um, but you see the carrier is coming in. That carrier has 100% avoided me like the plague this whole time. And as you can see, we get our first plane shot down. And you can see Dallas is right there. And we're going to go ahead and take another shot at Dallas and kind of spread him out a little bit in case he decides to break or go forward. And we got a little bit unlucky on these cruisers. A couple of these cruisers shouldn't have been a while around for a while. And you're going to see he's got me on fire. He's going to give me two fires. But with the carrier over here, I don't want to... Uh, put out two fires right now. I know that sounds crazy, but if that happens and then all of a sudden the carrier gets a uh, gets a flood on me, it's like, good luck. You're pretty much, your game is done, man. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I think it's right here where I decide I need to quit shooting my guns and go dark here for a minute. Get rid of this fire. Because now it's to the point where I'm not going to be able to heal all of it back anymore. Uh, so you can see I'm not shooting my guns. You can see Dallas is out of range. Everybody's out of range. No aircraft carry around, so I do, in fact, hit it. And with nobody being able to spot me, I get a free shot here. And I'm really glad that was a free shot. Who knows, maybe the carrier comes back for me. And we're going to go ahead and hit Dallas or the uh, Texas. And we we're kind of keeping an eye on Hayuga here, but I'm not worried about it. I feel like in a... Uh, 1v1 in almost in most cases I'm going to be plenty fine as we see the emerald up in front of us uh, the renown is over there um, but we're not going to shoot because half of our guns are going to hit the island and like I said kind of you're going to see me pay attention really closely to where this Hayuga is uh, because one of the I don't know if there was more than one Hayuga but early in the match I do remember that a Hayuga did get a dev strike on their team, so I was really paying attention to that Hayuga. Um, and we're going to take another shot at Texas. And the cruisers in Texas avoided me for a while in this match. As you can see, the carrier is now coming at me. We're going to go ahead and turn in as we get our high caliber at 117,000. Meaning we're probably going to do about 60%, rough estimate, over 60% of the total damage of the enemy team by the time this match is done. And this could be an, been even crazier. So if you didn't know, high caliber you get at 30% 30, 30 of the damage and if you've hit four people. So I've done 30% of the entire team's damage already in this match and only three people are dead. So we're going to go ahead and take a shot at the Emerald. And I don't know what happens here, but I don't even think we hit a shell on the Emerald, to be honest. He must have did a good job. You see, I'm trying to get the cap here now. It's close. If I get the cap here, we can definitely uh, go ahead and uh, do that. But I can see people are starting to come at me and the carrier is coming at me now. Uh, so my thought process here was is normally I would take the cap, but because we're down ships and At this point I started to realize I was the mo one of the more effective guys I figured the carrier could push up and take this cap. He's over here um, And instead of shooting the Hayuga there, there's no reason 
to shoot somebody, get him involved in the fight when he hasn't been shooting me. I know it was a good shot, but the cruiser, I'm more worked up about getting that cruiser out of here. The Hayuga hasn't even really been paying attention to me. I don't think he's fired one direction here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and try to get rid of the Dallas because he's been super annoying with his fires. So we're going to, in fact, go ahead and get rid of him. Um, and right now you can see the Renowns there, Hayuga's there. I'm kind of looking. He's still not focused on me. At this point, with the carry moving up, I thought he was going to go ahead and take C-Cap. Uh, because every, if you look at the map, everybody's gone. Uh, obviously, we don't know where the carrier is by this point. You can see he's at the very top of the map, so I've kind of assumed he's rotated to, like, the left of the A-cap on the map. That's kind of what I was thinking. You're going to see this carrier play. his. Uh, the difference in this match was their carrier versus our carrier, 100%. Well, I mean, we players too, but for the most part, the biggest difference was the carriers. The carrier tried to avoid me like a plague when he could, when he had other targets, um, and he's going to make a really smart play later on, and it's going to definitely be a big factor in the outcome of the match. Is Now the Hayuga is shooting at me. We're going to go ahead and start shooting the Hayuga. I He gets pretty lucky there that I don't get a Citadel. I think that was like 8 kilometers. Um, all that being said, this match with only two Citadels <laughs> turning out pretty good. Uh, 140,000 damage. Now, uh, we're going to try to finish off the Renown, but you can see we don't have carrier spotting. Uh, I have nothing to shoot at. This Hayuga takes a shot at me. And this is the difference in the carriers. I asked for uh, intelligence, or for spotting here and you're going to see how long it takes to get spotting um he's going to go focus on some other stuff i know if he had he spotted this carrier at all for me this outcome would have been way different 100 percent. we might have even won if he takes the c cap and he spot and he spots the carrier for me uh, this is a huge outcome because you see I've been sailing the last what I don't know two minutes probably without a target He could have spotted The carrier so I could have known where it was or the other ships, but he doesn't even have a plane up in there I don't what don't understand what he's doing Also, you'll notice the other carrier does not have a plane in the sky right now and hasn't for a little bit This is a smart play that caught me off guard you're going to laugh here in a second um, on this carrier of why he wasn't putting planes up in there for a little bit on the enemy team. As you can see, we're spotted here now. And I instantly have red flags, but there is the Texas. And you're going to see why that carrier did not put up planes. Because you're going to see that he is right next to me. <laughs> didn't know that. And this would have been a huge different outcome because you can see I have half my health still, right? So we're going to take this turn and try to t kill the Texas at the same time because it's honestly, it's quicker for me as I can see the other guys are wrapping around the island. Uh, and now the our carrier starts to spot them guys, but it's too late for me for that. We're going to go ahead and get rid of Texas and now... We're going to turn our attention to the carrier, which we get our clear skies. Uh, also, we got a confederate at some point in that whole mess. Um, and at 10 kilometers, we're going to take a shot at the servo. This is one of the more disappointing shots I've ever had on a carrier. <laughs> I thought for sure he was gone. And we just leave him with a little bit. But if I don't take them two last hits of the carrier, by the way, at the end of the match, your, a lot of your AA is destroyed because you've been shot at so much, particularly Dallas Recta. I'm guessing a lot of my AA, and there's nothing we can do here. But um, if we had had spotting, there was a full battleship uh, left, and there was a full cruiser left this could have been almost a 300k game you know cruiser with 35,000 that battleship had at least 
50,000. And there was another battleship on the board plus the last of things. So we could have, we're really close to having a really crazy game in California. But 210K is still a really crazy game. Honestly, to me, though, um, it doesn't matter if you lose, really. So uh, we also had, if that would have been a win, that would have been at least 30 what 3200 base damage with the win bonus so pretty solid game all in all anyway you guys have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time folks have a good one <laughs>